And praise the Lord, everybody. But the floor is just, we gave him the floor as a handkerchief. We gave it to his wife Saturday night. When he put it on his body, he felt something touch him. 20% of his kidneys were functioning Saturday night. He's in here tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. We ought to thank the Lord. That's a miracle. Oh, that's cute, but it's still a miracle from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thankful to hear that. Excited about what God is doing. And we honor Bishop and Sister Foster. If you love them, would you get loud and clap your hands? And Amen. Amen. And I heard he tore it up in Houston this weekend as I assumed he would. And you're so blessed to have their leadership. Somebody said amen. amen. Got to have my beautiful wife and family here with me tonight. And feel direction from the Holy Ghost, the book of Job, chapter 23, book of Luke, chapter 1, and Luke, chapter 6. I say thank you for the hospitality the staff has provided our family. Uh, we truly, truly appreciate it. And it's been a great, great revival. Amen. I think if I've got it right, after Sunday, when I was told, 282 people filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Amen. And more to come. Job 23, verse 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 53, He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. Luke chapter 6 and verse 21. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. I want to preach. I've been studying throughout the day today and feeling a witness, a strong witness in the Holy Ghost. and was trying to write it all down before church tonight. I want to preach to you a place called hunger. A place called hunger. Lord Jesus, I worship you for what you're about to do. I take authority over any spirit that would hinder what's about to happen tonight and starting from tonight going forward in this church's future. In Jesus' name, help people, God, corporately and individually. In Jesus' name, and somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated. There is a place where the atmosphere shifts. There's a place where direction manifests in your life, where answers come to the surface, where miracles get in motion, where God gets involved. This place is called hunger, hunger for God. There are people all over the world that are hungry for something right now, all over this room, people are hungry for peace, for blessings, direction, favor, acceptance, position. But there's one thing people are hungry for more than anything. Care to guess what that is? Food. That was funnier than one laugh, but still. Y'all must be sleeping tonight. We won't sleep when we're done, trust me. Food is the thing that everybody wants more than anything. And if you think I'm lying, let's see how long you can fast. Because food is the thing your flesh craves more than fame, more than money, more than position. You want food. Everybody's an eater in here. Praise the Lord. Few people hunger for God at the level that God wants them to hunger for. I was praying today, and I asked the Lord, how come, no matter how hard I beg everyone to show up to outreach, the same 50 show up? And he said this to me. No one can be hungry for revival if they're not hungry for me first. 
You cannot hunger for revival if you're not hungry for God. Hunger for God produces hunger for revival. And if you do not hunger for God, you do not care about revival. It's quiet. Mm -hmm. People hunger for things of this world more than the things of God. But the things of God are what ultimately stops the attacks of the world, releases the blessings into the life of the saint of God, and helps the child of God. I feel to tell you more than anything, if the revival continues two days, two months, or two years in this church, it's going to have to be fueled with prayer and fasting corporately throughout the weeks, not just once in a while. Y'all are sitting on me tonight, aren't you? It's easy to pray during church, but if there's going to be a real breakout revival, a spirit of prayer and fasting has to hit the body of the church to where no matter who's preaching, I want to get a hold of God like I've never felt Him in my life. <laughs> fasting and praying is truly the definition of hunger for God. If you say you want the Lord, but you never fast, then, and you never pray, well, your words are right, but the actions do not back up the words. If you say you want God more than anything, but you eat nine meals a day, and you talk to God twice a week, the truth, though, it's quiet now. The truth is food is what you want. I've come to preach something and release something in here. There is such a thing as getting in the spirit of fasting and the spirit of prayer. I figured I'd get four amens right there because we don't want to go here. But real revival in a church, when that fasting gets a hold of people and they start to pray, can I say it like I want to say it? That prayer room needs to have people in it every day of the week, not just Sundays. And some of you do not like this tonight. Wow. I wish I had all of you that believe this. The prayer room needs to be filled. We need people praying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Don't get, I must be strong tonight, but don't make me come up here and sweat my guts out and Bishop come beg us to worship if there's no hunger in your house for revival during the week. I'm wasting my time if you don't really want to witness to someone. I'm wasting my time if you don't really want to reach someone and if you don't want to fast and Because guess what? There are places that do. You read about powerful people in the Bible. They all had one thing in common. They fasted. They pr Moses fasted 40 days twice. Twice. You know why he went a second time? Because after the first time, he slipped in the flesh too pretty quick. Killed up, threw all those commandments down, broke them, and he said, I need to fast again. Went back up the second time. Didn't blow it the second time. Elijah fasted 40 days. David fasted. Esther fasted three days. No food, no water. I'm going to get really in trouble right now. I mean, it, this could shut the revival down. But fasting means to not eat. We think, now this is going to get me in trouble, some of y'all heroes out here, that if I don't eat sugars and meats, I'm fasting. Yeah, I figured I'd get one amen. Because we think Daniel did that. You need to read in the original Hebrew if you think Daniel did that. He was 13 when he went 10 days with pulse. He was 82 when he did not eat the king's meat. Read in the Hebrew. He did not eat at all. In other words, at 13, he got onto something that he realized God answers when I get hungry for him. And the older he got, the hungrier he got for God. In the church today, we usually fast and pray when we first get in. 
and then we just exist as we age for God. Daniel said, the more I age, the closer I want to get to him. The older I get, the more I want from God. When's the last time you were at the place called hunger? When's the last time you craved nothing more but a breakthrough in his presence? When's the last time you did not care about anything but hearing his voice, feeling his touch? When's the last time you looked forward to fasting? You looked forward to praying? Or do you just look forward to all the people getting the Holy Ghost? I'm going to be very straight with you. They will not stay in a culture that does not pray. They will not stay in a culture that's just, okay, we'll only get with it if Bishop helps us. We have got to create the atmosphere. That's why God keeps having me preach on prayer. I feel it. In the whole, he's trying to stir the culture to pray more. That Maybe normal you would, you would need to, but in this type of revival with the people he's drawing in, it's going to take the church going to another level in prayer, in fasting, to keep the people wanting to be there. They're not looking for hype. They're not looking for flesh. They want something real. They want to feel power. They want to feel anointing. They want to feel the holiness of God. They do. <laughs> Esther fasted. Daniel fasted. Jeremiah fasted. Isaiah fasted. Paul, the Bible said, wasn't fastings often. And even Jesus fasted. You want to preach something powerful? Read Matthew. We all think he went to the wilderness to fast. It said he went to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. In other words, he knew an encounter with hell was coming. So he said, I'm not going to eat until I get victory over that demon that's coming at me. I just gave somebody a key right there that's fighting the devil in their house or in their mind. Jesus said, I know he's coming. I know he's circling. He's going to try to meet me. I'm not going to eat until he shows up. Because if I fast when he shows up, I'll defeat him in the very purpose that he's trying to accomplish. And even when the fast was over, he was done. And he hungered. And the devil said, turn these rocks into bread he said not gonna happen why because you never let a devil tell you when it's time to eat you never let the devil tell you when it's time to engage your flesh you you never let the devil tell you it's okay you've done enough to relax now you deserve to sit there and not stand up tonight and not worship you were there Sunday you helped out you can be a statue tonight the devil loves it when after you've consecrated you agree to chill with him we need a call to abnormal consecration in this day and hour Every church goes on the Daniel fast. Cracker barrel, vegetable plate, extra okra, extra fries. One guy told me he gained 10 pounds on the Daniel fast. What a beast. I had a guy one time tell me at my wedding, I picked him up from the airport. I'm not going to say who it is. Picked him up and he said, hey man, let's go eat. I'm, I'm breaking a 30 day fast. I said, 30 days? 30 days, bro. Hadn't that eaten. I said, no, we're, we're good friends, right? He said, yeah. I said, I can tell you stuff, right? He said, yeah. I said, you've gained a lot of weight in the last 30 days. You sure you haven't eaten? He said, I fasted everything but breads. I said, wait a second. Breads? Like anything with dough? It's like, if I eat pizza, I don't eat the cheese, don't eat the sauce, don't eat the meat. If I eat cookies, I take out the chips. I just, whatever I got to do. I was like, wow, I want that anointing. <laughs> Let me pray against the diabetes, first of all. Hallelujah. It's amazing what we call a fast. 
Now, I think there's things that we consecrate, absolutely. But it's because you don't drink a Pepsi. Does not mean you're fasting. Fasting, real fasting is pushing the plate away saying, God, I hunger for you like Job said. more. In other words, Job said, I'm more hungry to hear his voice than I am to eat dinner tonight. That's true fasting. I'm so desperate. That's why people don't do it. They're comfortable. They've got money. They're happy. They've got a nice house. They've got a good car that runs. I don't have to be at outreach. I don't have to be desperate. Job said, you let some hell get in your house and you'll start praying, Lord, nothing matters more to me than the words that come out of your mouth. <laughs> Fasting. I told the prayer meeting a couple weeks ago, fasting activates warfare. Fasting weakens the devil. It weakens the devil. Fasting brings demons out. Demons that are resisting you. I'm going to tell some stories that I hope, oh, I hope I'm all right here because I'm, I'm out here tonight with you, okay? Fasting exposes where hell's hiding. My friend was, was a, a, in Chicago, pastor's. And he got on some fast, and he said, what's the key to going on long fast? I told him some things, prayed over him on the phone. He said, I'm starting tomorrow. Longest fast he had done was five days. Launched a 21-day fast the next day. 21 days, finishes it, gets to the pulpit. There's a lady on the back row, been there six months, claps her hands, comes to the altar with everybody. A witch. No one knew she was a witch. They just thought she was a guest. The second he finishes 21 days, takes the microphone, she stands up and starts cursing him. Oh, that's quiet. Not everyone that comes to church wants revival. I've had him curse me on the back row, curse my car. I've had all kinds of stuff. But when she started doing that, he went back to her, cast the devils out of her, made her raise her hands, and God filled her with the Holy Ghost. For six months, she was undercover trying to attack his church. But the second, Shotalahaya, somebody decided to fast and pray. Hell had to manifest and heaven released power. Do you want the real thing? Fasting activates warfare. I told you a few weeks at the prayer meeting, when Daniel fasted in Daniel 10, that's when the demons and the angels started fighting. They didn't fight till somebody fasted. Why? There's nothing to fight for. But when someone says, I'm going after it, I've got an answer I need to get from God, that causes heaven and hell to stir. And when that angel came down for Daniel's prayer, he said, listen, that demon that I fought to get here is going to try to fight me on the way back, and he's got a friend of his, a prince from another nation that's going to try to block me. In other words, I told the prayer meeting that night, he hell abandoned their post in a different nation. The prince left the nation of Grisha to come help the other demon fight over Daniel's fasting. If one guy or one lady makes up their mind, I want revival and I'm not going to eat until something happens. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to get a hold of God. You talk about stirring things up. The, you know why it's hard? Because we want it, but we also want our flesh to be satisfied. We're actually slowing down our... Now, we can't fast all the time, obviously. But our, the, I'm preaching to the ones that never fast, never pray, and say, I want revival. No, you don't. Let's just be real. No, you don't. Because real revival manifests, when some, whether it's individually or at the church, in the youth group, at the home, at the job. It only manifests when we put the flesh down and say, whatever I've got to do to get you involved, I'm going to show you I want you in. You can eat the rest of your life. Let me ask you something. What's going to reward you more? The pizza? Or the answer from God. It's quiet tonight because I'm drawing the real line here. Fasting is what hell fears more than anything. 
Fasting makes a coward in Elijah turn to a prophet against Jezebel. Fasting is what causes Moses to walk off a mountain and his face glowing. Hunger for God. James Kilgore's parents, when they wanted revival, when they, when they got there in their city and nothing happened, the, his mom and dad for 30 days straight prayed 24 hours a day. His mom and dad, one would pray, and when the one would get tired, the other one would start. 30 days, oh, it's quiet now, 24 hours a day. And when that 30 day ended, revival exploded because God cannot ignore when someone says, I'm after it. I'm not talking like I'm after it. I'm going to go after it like I've never gone after it. Either we are going to really go after it or we're going to stop acting like we want it because this place needs to be filled. I am believing God that this place should be filled, that the people getting the Holy Ghost should be staying here and should be staying in the atmosphere. It's straight preaching tonight. You came to the wrong service. Verbal being. One time was so hungry for God. He locked himself in a church for 29 days. And when he came out, the congregation gasped for air. Not because he was so frail, but because there was a light around his body. It scared them half to death. One time, Verbal Bean was on a fast. And Verbal Bean, as a kid, begged his dad to go to the altar every service. And his dad would never go. And his dad died and went to hell. And years later, Verbal Bean's preaching. And he's on a fast, and he goes and drinks a big thing of water, and he thinks to himself, I wonder how long it's been since my dad has tasted water. And he threw the water down and finished the fast without it. Oh, it's quiet. This is what the old timers did. They wanted it. They wanted it. They didn't just talk like they wanted it. They wanted it. I remember years ago, I would pray, God, let me fast. Let me fast like I've never fasted. And I would make up my mind, I'm going to go, I'm going to go a certain amount of days, and I would never get there. I wanted to go eight days, I would go seven. Then the next time I wanted to go nine days, I went eight. Next time I went nine days. Next time I went ten days. And 11 and 12 and 13. After the third, I was like, I can't, I, this is going to be a slow pace, God. And then one day driving home. I'll never forget it. After church, Sunday night, Florida, me and Janair driving through the forest late at night, phone rings, preacher calls. It was July 13th or 14th, I believe, maybe 15th, five years ago, five and a half years ago. And the preacher calls and he's talking to me and he says, you know, I preached today about how you can only climb to the top of Mount Everest Three weeks out of the calendar year, last week of April, first week of May, and a week in October. The rest of the time, the air does not open up. The, the wind is so severe at the top, you can't even try. In fact, even in those three weeks, that last 2,000 feet is called the death zone. And you, most people die on Everest in the death zone right there. Even when the weather's open, that's how severe it is. And he said, I just preached today that when the window opens, you got to go for it. you got to go as high as you can. you got to reach for it. And he starts talking. And as sure as I'm standing here, the Holy Ghost started talking to me, and I couldn't even hear him talk. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you'll start July 29th. You will go 40 days. You will finish September 6th. This is your window. I said, I've never even gone more than 13 days. He said, this is your window. This is your Everest. And so I started praying. And God give me the strength to go that week and I'm telling this for a reason two weeks and three weeks and on the fourth week on the 28th night after preaching in Florida and three services on a Sunday we went back to the house Sunday, Sunday night me and Janae she was pregnant with Jude and I'm shaky and I'm weak and I'm laying in the bed and I'm reading Joy Haney's book on fasting just trying to go to sleep and I'm reading that and I fall asleep about 3 o'clock in the morning and I have this nightmare and in this nightmare this 
people are cursing at me and attacking me. And I wake up and I'm laying in bed, my eyes open, and not in my head, but audibly I hear a voice speak. I'm in your living room right now. I roll over to grab my wife and for 10 minutes, face to face with a demon from hell. 28th night. Believe it or don't believe it, I don't care. I couldn't say a word. I was frozen. Just stared at me. And after 10 minutes of sheer fear, I whispered Jesus and it disappeared. And the Lord said it took you 28 days, days just for hell to worry about you being on their turf at all. What you call real revival is not real revival. I'm about to show you what real revival is. And from that fast, thousands, over 10,000 people now have received the Holy Ghost. The dead have been raised two times. You can't convince me that there's not power when you fast. I don't care what you think about it. I know for a fact that when you make up your mind, I want it. I'm going after it. I want to get a hold of God. That's when things shift. You want it to get real? On that fast, the Lord told me there are 13 cities in America where I will pour out my spirit in the last days greater than other cities. And the number four city on that list was Dallas, Texas. And I knew then, five years ago, that I would be here in a revival where God was... So Holy Ghost right there. Where God would do a greater work than any church in the area. Someone needs to wake up and realize heaven is watching and hell is watching. What are you doing? What am I doing? It's in the Dallas airport a year or two later in a layover. Headed to preach in Louisiana. Finished a 15, 16 day or get off the fast in the airport in my layover at DFW. And my flight was getting ready to board on the phone with an evangelist friend of mine, Bobby Wade. I go into the restroom, I'm talking to him, and I say these words. He was fasting too. I said, Bro, just keep fasting and praying. The devils know us. They know us when we pray and fast. They know we've got the power. I walk out of the restroom. As I walk out, I hear these words behind me. They know us. They know us. They know us. I turn around. There's a man standing at the urinal. He says, we know you. And he starts to cuss at me and command me to leave this place. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you right now. The man fell over, and he stood up and rubbed his head. And he said, I'm so sorry, sir. I don't know what I said. I'm sorry. It wasn't him. It was the devils that knew there's something destined. Shut up. That's why I'm so intense. I'm not here for a cute church. I don't care what people say about me. You weren't there when I was pushing it down, saying, God, I want revival more than I want anything. And I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost that a spirit of fasting and prayer will be released in here tonight. Oh, I'm telling you right now, people are about to fast like they've never fasted. People are about to pray hours that they never prayed before. The Lord is about to impart it in here because there's something that we must go deeper in to climb higher in the revival. When you, now this is straight preaching. This is the real stuff tonight. Okay? You don't preach this everywhere. But when you get into an atmosphere, where it's this crazy, and it's this intense, and it's this real. Hell looks for carnality anywhere. And the reason I'm preaching so straight the last couple weeks is because the harvests that are manifesting on Sundays cannot keep going if the, if the spirits that are working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and are keeping us from praying and fast, if they control us, we'll see the harvest and then it'll walk out and we'll lose it. 
I believe with everything in me, it's the will of God that this harvest stay in this building, stay in this house, that God's not doing this revival accidentally. I don't think God is doing it accidentally. I think God's doing it because one man has been preaching it and prophesying it for 36 years. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, if the people will say, we're not just with you when you preach, but we're with you Monday when no one's around. And we're with you Tuesday afternoon when no one's there in the prayer room. And we're with you Thursday night. Let's stand here, feeling for the Holy Ghost right now. Fasting will break the back of the enemy. It's the thing that no one wants to do. And the reason is, it's the thing that works the most. It gets you out of the flesh and into the spirit faster than anything. You might go through a day or two of being grumpy. Well, I fast, but I get a migraine. It's called your detoxing, homie. You're not dying, you're detoxing. It's all the sugar coming out. I do it, but I just don't feel good. You're detoxing. After day three, I'm not trying to give you a sign to love, but your body gets into ketosis. Your body starts getting energy. The, the hunger goes away. That's the physical part of fasting. You enter a place where your body starts to feel good. On day four, you don't start to crave food like you did day one, two. But the reason why more people in fast on day one, day two, and day three is they think the headache is the body saying don't fast. It's the body saying you need to fast. There's something wrong physically. That's beside the point. But spiritually, when you break that voice saying don't do it, don't extend, go beyond, and you go beyond that. Now you tap into the world that hell fears you tapping into. Now you're walking in the spirit when you go witness to someone. Now you're dangerous everywhere because God's going to cons- No, I get it. Some people cannot physically fast. And those, I'm not preaching to those people tonight. I understand that. I understand that completely. But you can pray more. Well, if you can't fa- you can pray more. What would happen in here? Oh, this is going to get really crazy. If everybody in this room fasted one day between now and Sunday. I think we'd be showing God. We want it. We want it. We want it. I think we would be showing heaven and we'd be showing hell. Watch out. I think, I'm going to say it boldly, I think we'd have more encounters Saturday during outreach. Positive and spiritual. I think we'd have all kinds. You know why? I think hell gets nervous when a church says, bring it. We are ready to step into that world and tap into that type of revival. No matter what, you t- Here's two rules I, I preach when I preach about fasting. Rule number one, when you're going to go on a fast, always check in with him first. Cool with that? Why? Your fast needs to be covered by your authority. Why? Because fasting takes you into the spirit world. Don't go into the spirit world uncovered. That's rule number one. If he says yea, nay, you do whatever he says. If he says yes, you're covered. Rule number two. Ready? Always, if, unless God's spoken specifically to start tonight, always pray for when God wants you to start. He might say September 21st. He might say July 9th. I don't know. But pray, and God will give a date to you. And here's why. And you can start to build up yourself in the spirit before that day gets there. And the more consecrated you get before a fast, guess what? Ready? The longer you can go on a fast reason why you can't go long in this fast if you're not praying beforehand is because God's protecting you and you cannot go deep in the spirit world unconsecrated. It's like saying, I want, I'm signing up for the Marines. Send me to the war right now and you've never been to boot camp for training. You're going to go get killed. 
But God, that's why prayer every day, reading your Bible every I know this is practical tonight, but it needs to happen. And, and that's why that's called training. And the more you do that, guess what? When it's time to step up and game day shows up and you're there to do this and you need answers and you need prayers, then guess what? You've been training for this and you cannot wait to step into this because you're going somewhere. Let me add one more thing to that. Anytime God... Now, I'm writing a book on this. Anytime God has called me on an extended fast, I always do two things. I always write out a list of prayers, of requests that I want God to answer. They're not, they're not small things. I mean, I, I write a big list. Okay? And, and I pray that list every day. And sometimes during the fast, answers come, crazy answers. After the fast, answers always come. Every time I've been blessed to go on a long fast and I've prayed about big things, every single time God has intervened and answered huge prayer requests that I never fasted for before, prayed for a bunch, and nothing ever happened. Fasting is literally like pushing fast forward on a VCR. It speeds up favor in your life. Fasting speeds up favor. Something that a door that can open five years from now can open next month if someone says, I am ready to reach for God like I've never reached for God. And the second thing, you have to do this. Fill your mind with the word of God. Don't fast and then be on social media all day long. Don't fast and be on Netflix all day long. You've got to put the word in as much as you can each day. Because the more you put the word in, the more your thoughts are God thoughts and not flesh thoughts. And flesh will say, I'm hungry for food. But the spirit says, no, you're hungry for answers. You're hungry for a breakthrough. You're hungry for your kid to say, be saved. You're hungry for an Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. I feel like something's about to happen beyond the altar call, beyond the building tonight. I want you to close your eyes. If you have a genuine need or a few needs that you've prayed about and nothing's happened yet, raise your hand. Can I humbly say this? It's time to step up the prayer into the dimension of fasting. Fasting is fuel for the fire of prayer. If you, and I believe the Lord told me this a couple years ago, and I'm just saying this because he told me this. He told me whenever I tell you to preach this, which has only been four or five times, whenever I tell you to preach it, this is what he told me. At the end, whoever's hungry, I will let you impart the spirit of fasting in the atmosphere and people will come back and fast longer than they've ever fasted and walk in deeper places and I cannot tell you if it's been one it's been a thousand people that have come up and told me that fasting thing I had never gone more than a day I went five days never gone more than three days I went 18 days I went 12 I don't know what it is I just know God loves it when his people say I want it I want more than just lip service man I feel the Holy Ghost up here tonight I want to go deep in consecration if Daniel did it and Paul did it and David did it and Elijah did it and you did it God I I want to go. If you think God can answer that prayer, and if you want to believe God to strengthen you to fast for the answer, would you come stand up here right now? I do not say that any, so, and if, if you think I'm preaching, I, I humbly repent to you because I'm not trying to. I'm just telling you what I know beyond anything else in my life. I know this works. I know this works. I know it works. remember on that 40 day and I'm, one of my prayer requests was for my brother and his wife and the divorce papers were signed and the ninth day of the fast was the court date 
And on the ninth day, I remember saying, come on, God. I know you hear me. And I remember when they called and said, we've ripped up the papers. I can tell you story after story after story of miracles that happened in my life, in my family, in our ministry, with our children. Oh, sure, hell fought. But oh, did heaven step up. Did the Lord evermore move. I dare boldly say I wouldn't be preaching this revival tonight and be blessed to be preaching to this church at all had not been for fasting. Fasting, I begged God, Lord, open the doors. Lord, let me have revival. I have the faith for it. And he said, you have faith for what you've not consecrated enough for. Time to build a bigger altar, Abraham. He finally had to build one big enough for his family to fit on. He finally had a big one big enough for his boy to fit on. And he, he said, I've been sacrificing everything, but now I'm going to build an altar big enough for Isaac. That's what gets you the favor, Abraham. Building a bigger altar. Would you just, before we pray right now for the release of this, would you just start to pray right now and check your heart, check your mind. Make sure the Lord is clearing anything out of the way right now. Get yourself in a receiving position in the spirit. God, I'm ready. God, I want this. I want to go beyond where I've been. I'm tired. I feel stuck. If you feel stuck, I'm preaching to you right now. If you feel like the answer hasn't manifested, I'm preaching to you right now. There are some answers only fasting brings. There's some answers only fasting brings. You can pray about it till your guts fall out. But some things only happen when you fast. There's a place called hunger. There's a place called hunger. Some encounters only happen on a mountaintop, Moses. That's it. Pray right now. I'm going to pray in a moment and release something in this atmosphere. But I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Let's set our hearts for it. If, if you need to go farther in God, if you're not involved as you need to be, it's time to go beyond yourself. It's time to pin your flesh down and say, you will not dictate what happens. You will not control me. You will not tell me when I'm weak. You will bow down to the Spirit of God. The Bible talks about a generation of people whose God is their belly. Help us, God, to get to a place where my stomach doesn't dictate what I do in the spirit. Help me get to a place where my stomach does not dictate how far I go in the spirit. Give me a mind that's more powerful than the flesh that I live in. Here's what's about to happen right now. It's very similar to a prayer of faith. But I feel the Holy Ghost when I pray this. The Lord will release a spirit of fasting in this atmosphere. And God will call several of you different times, different days. And Bishop will take it in a moment. And he'll direct what needs to happen in this revival. But I'm telling you right now, a spirit of fasting is about to fall upon a lot of people in this altar. A spirit of prayer is about to fall on people who have not been praying. A hunger for God. An old place that someone used to visit frequently. An old place. An old place. Memories of when I was hungry for God. Memories when no one out worshipped me. Memories when no one was hungrier than I was. Memories when no one wanted it more than I did. Memories of when I was so desperate, I didn't care what anyone thought about it. I had to get an answer. I had to get an answer. Where are you, Daniel? Where are you, Esther? It's time to go back to that place. 
Someone's waiting on you to fast. Some family member's waiting on their answer and you have the key to the door. Someone can't fast for their need, but you can. Here's what we're about to do in a moment. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your heads and raise your hands in a moment. And when you do, I'm going to ask you to begin to worship God. And I'm going to have Bishop lay his hands on me while I pray. So I'm covered. And when I'm done praying, I'm going to release the spirit of fasting upon you in Jesus' name. And when I'm done doing it, you start shouting the name of Jesus with everything in you on purpose for that fast to fall upon you and for those answers that you need to manifest. And they're going to manifest. Would you agree with me right now? It's in the room right now. Would you raise your heads? Would you raise your hands? Bishop, would you come cover me right now? by the authority of the word of God and by the power that's in the name of Jesus I pray a release right now of abnormal consecration and a spirit of fasting to fall on your people now in Jesus name shout Jesus Release it, God, right now. Release it, hunger. Release a hunger. Release a hunger. Somebody start speaking. I receive it. I receive. I receive. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Let me have your attention. Let me have your attention. I want to tell you how on time this message is. Today at 6 o'clock, I looked at the clock. The Holy Ghost had spoke to me and said it's time to fast. I have not talked to this preacher about this. And this was the scripture. He preached Job 23 and 12. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Today, it was Proverbs 29 in verse 7 and 8. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanities and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. I immediately went and looked what that those words meant. Convenient. For me, food convenient for me, convenient food. 
There was three things that I found. In the Hebrew, it literally means it's of my allowance. And then it goes on. It's a prescribed portion. It is a prescribed action. Like a prescription that you had had filled at a drugstore. A doctor would write you out a prescription. If you don't want vanity and lies and you don't want poverty or riches, then you need to be fed convenient food. Convenient food. It's a prescription. It's that prescribed portion. It's that prescribed action. And so tonight, as I read this, his text, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I went, dear God in heaven, is he getting ready to preach about fasting? And that's what God was dealing with me. And I felt... And hell has fought me all the way up to this church till I got here tonight. And I thought it was three days that I have fasted before this revival. I don't think I fasted since this revival has started. And everything he was preaching tonight is what's been weighing in my spirit. And the Lord spoke to me to fast. Wow. So I look up my necessary food. It's an appointed portion. Convenient food was prescribed. But necessary food is an appointed portion. And His Word is more than my appointed portion. I'm telling you right now, there's families that are getting ready to have the curse that has been on you for generations are going to be broken by this fast. I'm telling you right now, some of y'all are struggling with things. You're up against it with these things. But when we come, and it means more to us than riches and vanities and lies. And it's more to us than my appointed. Food. Some of y'all already know where you're going to eat tomorrow. You already know where you're going to eat on Sunday. It's already mapped out. It's an appointed time to eat. But it's got to be God, you and the words you speak. This word that is written. This prescription that he has written and given. And this preacher came tonight and has given it to us. So in my mind, I started and I made some notes. Okay, I'm going to have the staff, have them have some fasting, have the men have some fasting. And that, that's how my mind operates. But then when I get in here and he starts preaching, I, I had to come up on the platform. I couldn't sit still. I couldn't be quiet. Uh, And then I had to go get the Bible. I wanted this prescription. I I wanted this right here with me. I wanted it. Uh, When I laid hands on him, I put the word on him. Uh, Come on, somebody. What I'm talking about. I'm not going to come and say, okay, well, we're going to let the staff fast or the men or the women or we're going to do. No, I'm letting God do this thing. Tonight, God has opened it into some of your eyes right now. There's some of y'all right now that 
you, you've resisted it. There's some of y'all right now that your flesh has rose up and you know in the spirit God called you to a fast, but your flesh is warring and say, well, I can't do that. I've got this to do. I've got that to do. Let me tell you, this is greater than any trip. This is greater than anything you've already planned. I want God. I want God. I want God. I've already got meals planned to meet with people, some high, important people in this community. But you know what I'm doing? I'm telling them we're going to have to change that because I got something I want more than you. I got something. I, I, I need his word. I, I want, come on, somebody. Come on, raise your hands to God. Let's pledge ourselves again and afresh and anew. Come on, some of y'all. You need to break that flesh spirit off of you. You need to break that carnal, carnal spirit. You need to break that old lust of flesh. You need to break down that pride of life and the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. You need to bring your flesh under sub submission. Come on, come on, come on. Prayer will connect us to God, but fasting will disconnect us from the world. Oh, come on, somebody. Prayer will connect us to God, but fasting would disconnect us from our worldliness, from our carnality. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout yes. I'm telling you right now. Remember on that Sunday when we gave that offering? I gave my contingency fund. I try to keep three months contingency fund. I gave every bit of it. He said, give it without a question. Kim, if I've got it wrong, tell me. Did you not come to me and tell me today that one month from today, I'm to receive a check that I knew nothing about that will more than triple, more than triple, what I gave and what I gave was more than five decimal points or numbers when, when you get, get it out there. I'm not telling how much it was, but it's, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. There's only been one other time I gave that kind of money, and that was when we moved in this building. And God blessed me way beyond that. But now she said, she read me the letter that I had no idea that was coming. Shocked me. I still don't understand it. I still, I, I got to go back. I signed my name on it to get it. Yeah. Did you mail that today? First thing in the morning, that gets mailed. Are y'all hearing me? God blesses. Now he's called me to fast. He's called you to fast. Now will we do it? Or are we going to give in at the first little headache? I love that message tonight. I love that. I'm telling you that's why we prayed for this man. Why we prayed for that family. Because God is called this church. To not just be another church. Hey, they're watching us. They're asking about it. I get calls every day. They're wanting to know what's going on, what's happening, how is it. Missionaries have called me. Wow, what's going on in Dallas? I was praying and the Holy Ghost laid you on my heart. Are y'all hearing me? I have preachers call me and say, I don't know what's going on, but you've been heavy on my heart. What's happening? I said, man, we fighting devils. But don't worry, we're whipping him. 
because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Are y'all hearing me? So are you ready? Lay your hand on somebody there. You, you may, may not even know them. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Pray a prayer of faith right now. Hallelujah, pray. Speak against the carnal thought. Speak against that doubt and unbelief. Speak against lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life. Come on right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God's calling some of you to three days of fasting. God's calling some of you to five days, seven days. He's calling some of you for longer than that. Come on, make up in your mind. Hallelujah. I didn't come to play. I didn't come to go through the motion. I didn't come just to play around. Hallelujah. You want your soul saved? You want your family saved? You want your loved ones saved? You want your friends saved? You want revival? You want the blessings of God? Come on. Hallelujah. Make the consecration. Make the consecration. God, sanctify it. Set it aside. Set it aside. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray. Fast. Believe God. And watch what he does. Watch what he does. Oh, He Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, oh, hallelujah. Who shot He no, 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. My God. Ha, ha, no, 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Young people, don't shy away from this. High schoolers, don't say, well, th this is just for somebody else. No, sir. You, you can fast today. Some of y'all could fast two or three days. Come on now. Oh, I understand. Let's roll up our sleeves. Come on. If you can only fast a day. Well, fast a day. Take some nourishment and go again. If that's what God's calling you to, let's do it. If you can only fast one meal, fast your meal. Take nourishment and go again. But now while you're fasting, don't neglect your prayer. You're supposed to pray in a fast. It's not just doing without food. I know it's kind of big right now in the world. When bodybuilding and such, you fast. But friend, this is a different thing. This isn't building this old physical body. This is building a spiritual body. This is putting hell on the run. Come on, somebody. I want hell to know we're here. And we're taking our city. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. We're getting ready to go take over Reunion Tower. They said we can only have 200 up there. Well, we'll take 200. If I can, I'd love to have that tallest building, Bank of America building. I believe that's what it's called. They got a big old ballroom. I'm going to try for it. We can get more than 200 in that building. It looks out over the city. We're going to pray. And we're going to consecrate. We're going to rent buses. I got other whole churches that are saying we want to join with you. I've already got one, one pastor already committed to 140 person bus. He said, we'll pay for it. I said, I was hoping you'd say that. 
But I want 10 buses to go around this whole city, Dallas, Fort Worth. Go around those loops. Stop ever so often and pray. And while we're going, have somebody on that PA system over the bus tell them, all right, here's a truth preaching church. We're going by that church right now. It, it's about three miles off this road, or it's about 10 miles off this, and it's right there. It's this exit. We're praying for them. We call their name. We call that pastor's name. We start praying for revival, for growth, for victory, and we cover this whole metro. Come on, somebody. I'm talking revival. I'm talking growth. Come on. I want to double. I want to triple. By this time next year, we ought to be having two or three services because we can't fit everybody in here. Are y'all hearing me? Come on. I'm ready to go to American Airlines service for an Easter Sunday because we can't put everybody in. Are y'all hearing me? I know I'm getting way out here now. Oh, no, I'm not way out there. God can do anything. He's just waiting on us. We're waiting on God to grow the church, and God's waiting on the church. He's saying, if my people will, I will. And that's about humbling yourself, resisting, repenting, turning from your evil ways, wicked ways, and praying, fasting. He said, I heal your land. I'll pour out on you. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm telling you right now, there's some marriages that need the Holy Ghost in them. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about husband and wife that could line up and be some of the most strongest people. Are y'all hearing what I'm talking about? Come on, it's prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Seek God. Thank you, Brother Evangelist. My God. Man, I was thinking, okay, I got all day tomorrow, and I got all day Friday and Saturday. I'll go ahead and start fasting, but I'm going to put this thing together. Boy, we're going to have it mapped out. We're gonna be, I'll be talking to him. And then he gets up and said, a place called hunger. I went, oh, God. Mm, the Lord done done it again. What did I say Sunday? He's already done what he said he would do. Of the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you for this people. God bless now. God, fill people with your Holy Ghost power. If you need the Holy Ghost, all you've got to do right now is raise your hands. The Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you'll begin to speak with tongues. Come on, let's raise our hands to heaven right now. Somebody could receive the Holy Ghost right now for the very first time. Come on, there's faith right now. There, there's some belief here right now. Come on, right now people aren't thinking about where we got to go. And we got school and we got work and we got places to go and people to see and things to do. No, right now people are saying, oh, Lord. God, your word is more to my lips than my necessary food. Oh, God, feed me with that convenient food. I want that prescribed action. I want that prescribed portion. Oh, God, what you have for me, that's what I want. In the name of Jesus, it's more than that burger. It's more than that Mexican food. It's more than breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's more than supper. Oh, it's more than a snack. I want Jesus blessed right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. Are you ready? Yes. All right, somebody ought to be fasting tomorrow. Somebody ought to be fasting Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And here we go. All right? I trust you. Come on now. Am I going to have to get a piece of paper? Everybody sign up what days you're going to pray, what days you're going to fast. 
Hallelujah. Oh, we, we'll be coming with that on Sunday. We, we'll be prepared for it. Hallelujah. I had no idea. I should have known God was going to throw. No one that devil's fighting me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, y'all better go right now while you can. I'm fired up.